guys, welcome to my channel, welcome back to my channel. Many of you may or may not know, but I am a senior. I graduate this semester, it's my fourth year, and I'm so excited to finally be done with college. Don't get me wrong, I loved my experience in college, I had a blast, but I'm ready for something new, something different, and just time to move on. I have had a few tips and tricks that I've accumulated over the years and I wanted to share those with you. If you don't already know these tips, hopefully you try them out for yourself and save yourself some money. So without further ado, let's get started on to the video. Okay, so my first tip is do not buy your books from the bookstore, check the library first. That's my first and most important tip, check your school's library. Use the I ISBD or whatever number. Type in that number in your school's library and then you will see that the book will most often pop up. If it's not available for checkout, your professor might have it on reserve. And if you are pretty good at accommodating your time um, and planning accordingly, you are always gonna be able to check out the book, do your readings, do your homework, and then return it without having to purchase it. A lot of these books are usually expensive, so even if it's 60, 40, 30, whatever here or there that you can save, that will be adding up in the long run. So my second tip, and no, this is not sponsored. I wish it was. Um, if anybody knows how to contact them and like wants to sponsor me, I'm open my email will be down below um, but if you do have to purchase your books use slug books I love using slug books I've been using it for the past four years you don't buy books off of the website but what it basically does it compares a bunch of different websites for you so you can find the cheapest price available okay so tip number three so another thing that I would really recommend in regarding to books so let's say even using slug books you don't find a really cheap option the books not available at your library um, what I would recommend before you purchase a book is go on Facebook and see if your school has some type of like Facebook page or group page that somebody started and then add yourself to those groups and then just type in hey is anybody selling these books or browse and see what books people are selling a lot of the times people will just resell their books for the same classes that you've had and then they will sell it to you for a lot cheaper another tip that I really really recommend if you're able to is become a note taker you should check with your university first but if you get an email saying hey we need a note taker for this class respond back um, with this information definitely respond take a picture of any notes that you may have had from last semester or from high school if you're a first semester freshman just so you always have it on your phone just in case you do get that email because not only do you get a stipend which means they pay you at the end of the semester for being a note taker you also get priority registration at least for me the money really wasn't the reason why I was doing it they didn't pay me that much I only got like a hundred dollars when I was a note taker but I did get priority registration which what was which was what allowed me to be able to the register to register for the classes that I needed tip number five so in regards to picking your classes a lot of times people have a lot of troubles not knowing what classes they need to take what classes count for what requirements or anything have this thing called degree planner which basically plans out your degree per semester for your whole time there I know a lot of people at least that I know don't really like using that program but at, for me personally I thought it was amazing I thought it was great um, it helped me pick classes that I need so along with degree planner though I would also recommend going to your academic advisor every single semester for your registration day so you're able to talk to your counselor like hey am I on the right path am I taking the right classes I want to make sure that these classes that I'm taking are gonna count for these requirements because the last thing you want is to take classes that you don't need and aren't gonna count for anything that's just wasting time and money and honestly it's 2019 we don't got time to be wasting time or money so once you're finally in your classes and you're enrolled and this is gonna sound weird for those of you who aren't in college yet um, but those of you who are in college you all know that this is totally normal totally not weird at all but make at least one friend in that class if you're not a talker that's fine just ask the person next to you hey my name's Johnny 
can I get your number? Can we switch numbers? That way we can, um, just in case we miss class or something. You always wanna have at least one person in the class that you know, just in case you do miss class. You know, if you're sick, if you got an 8 a.m. and you can't go for whatever reason, and have that person be the one, be like, hey, like I miss, can I see your notes? What did they go over? Whatever, and then vice versa. If they miss, they can text you. So tip number, I forgot what tip number this is, so I'll just, we're just gonna keep going. <laughs> Use your student ID for discounts. I know everybody always says it, but nobody ever mentions places that you can go. I know a lot of places where I live give student discounts for using your ID. For example, the movie theaters, tickets are so much cheaper if you're a student. I think regular tickets are probably like $15, but if you use them with your student ID, they're like 11 bucks. So I know it's not a lot in theory, but I mean, it adds up. If you go to the movies pretty often, would you rather pay 11 bucks or 15 bucks? I don't know, you tell me. So yeah, use your student ID card for discounts. Usually around, if you live in a college town, a lot of more stores will be more open to giving discounts, but you're always able to just ask me like, hey, do you guys have discounts for students? And if they do, show that baby out use it because lord knows we are out here trying to save as much as money as we can also pro tip for all you love wearing victoria's secret pink they do give student discounts so take your student id card when you go out and pay be like hey i'm a student here's my id i need my discount okay so my next tip is a little more of a personal preference so take it with a grain of salt you can do whatever you want but this is just my personal experience i would recommend using an I, um, MacBook Air or an iPad to take notes in class. I take a laptop every single day to school because I do have longer days and I'd recommend using a MacBook Air or an iPad because they're a lot lighter, they're not so heavy, they're very easy to use. Honestly, a MacBook Air is so perfect for the, co the typical college student. It has every necessity that you'll need. And honestly, like the fact that it's not heavy really was, is a big factor, at least for me, for example. Uh, for all my commuter students out there, you know how rough it is to have to carry so many things that, uh, on your backpack and have it be so heavy. The last thing you wanna do is carry like a 20 pound computer. And I don't know if I'm exaggerating, but I used to have like the HP laptop and that was so heavy charger was heavy it was ridiculous like i felt like my backpack really weighed a lot less when i did make the investment and got the imac or macbook air so my last tip that's my little bonus tip is a little more career and internship wise people are always saying you know all these jobs want you to have so much experience when you're out of college like five years six years whatever and that's why it's so hard to find jobs and trust me i get it but Something to help facilitate that is doing some type of internship or volunteer work during your college experience or your college career. Now take that with a grain of salt though because I understand a lot of people tend to commute, have full-time jobs, part-time jobs, our parents while they're in college and sometimes it's nearly impossible to be able to have something else on the side. So I'm not saying that if you don't do an internship or volunteer work, you aren't equipped to enter the real world, not at all, that's not what I'm saying. But if you are interested in having an internship to gain more experience in whatever field that you're working in, contact the career and internship place at your school. They're able to help you um, find an internship or try to decide what it is that you want to go into in the field wise. For example, if you're a business major, do you want to go into finance, accounting, marketing, management? They can help you decide all those things and help you find different types of internships. So I really recommend doing some type of volunteer work just so you can add it onto your resume. Those were all my tips and tricks that I've learned throughout college. Let me know if you guys want more. I feel like these were kind of basic, but I think depending on what you guys want to see, if you guys want to see more social tips. I was in a sorority. I don't know if I ever mentioned that but I did do the Greek life, rushing, all that stuff. So you guys want to know about my experience and how that was and what the social life in college is for a commuter campus, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to film a video. If you guys want me to continue the Why I Choose My Major series, let me know what kind of videos you would like to watch down below. And I'd really appreciate it if you guys gave it a big thumbs up, subscribe down below, and click the notification bell. So if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. Comment down below what it is that you want to do once you have your dream career. What's your dream career? What is that consist of what would it be 
comment down below let me know what that is and i hope you guys have a great day thanks for watching bye